Chancellor, as public orator, I present Lem Sise, a candidate for an honorary degree. Lem Sise is one of Britain's leading poets. He has published several volumes of his own work, has edited anthologies, and appears often on radio, television, and YouTube. Lem has been a member of many judging panels for literary awards, including the Booker Prize. His verses can be seen on buildings all over Britain and have formed part of music concerts, including the BBC Proms. Last month, he was interviewed by Sally Phillips for the BBC to talk about what Christmas meant to him. He sees Christmas as an opportunity for each of us to be the best person we can be. In 2013, he founded the Christmas Dinners, a national network of volunteers who give dinner and presents to care leavers aged 18 to 25 of all races who might otherwise be unable to celebrate Christmas on the day itself. Why this particular focus? because Lem is himself a care lever, one of those people who have lived not with a family, but with the state in loco parentis, in what we call the care system. At the age of 12, his foster family placed him into care. He then spent six years in children's homes. No one hugged him. Christmas was not a good time. At 16, a social worker seemed determined to show him that someone did love him. He gave him letters from his mother, pleading for his return, and his birth certificate, which revealed a name he had never heard before, Lem Sise. Up until this point, he thought his name was Norman Mark Greenwood. <laughs> from the birth certificate, he learned the name of his Ethiopian mother. Three years later, at 21 years of age, he found her in West Africa. She had fled Ethiopia in the mid-1970s via her work with the United Nations. There had been no intention of his being apart from her forever. He was less than 12 months old when she asked for his return. Incomprehensibly, the social worker of the time blocked her request. It took several more years for Lem to trace his wider family, as can be seen in the BBC documentary Internal Flight of 1995. In 2015, the head of Wigan Council found the files which had been written about Lem and sent them to him. They are a weekly record of the first 18 years of his life. In lieu of family, these were all the relativity he had with his childhood, all written in the main by strangers to him. On receiving the files, he took the government to court to answer to the evidence that he had been stolen from his mother at birth, that he had had his name stolen, that he was placed with inadequate foster parents, that he was imprisoned unlawfully as a child. There followed three years during which a gruelling psychologist's report was written about him for the purpose of the case. The report detailed the trauma and the repercussions upon his psychology. Unable to face hearing the, the report alone, he produced a piece of theatre, and within a week he was on stage at the Royal Court to a sell-out crowd. It was called The Report at the Royal Court. Julie Hesmondhoff played the psychologist and read the report to Lem on stage. The audience heard the results for the first time at the same time as Lem heard the results for the first time. It was a unique form of verbatim theatre. The government settled out of court in July 2018, which is precisely when Lem started work on his autobiography. Within a year, in 2019, Canon Gate Books published his Sunday Times number one prize-winning memoir, My Name is Why within which are exact replicas of the files. In the recent BBC interview, when he is asked whether poetry was his salvation, he hesitates and replies that to say that would be to belittle poetry. It's bigger than me, and it's bigger than my story. Poetry is at the heart of who we are. His performances, like his speeches and written poems, change lives. People write to him to say that his words have inspired them to act, to donate to charity, to give of their time to others, to think differently. In recent years, a more lyrical note has come into his poems, 
though he is certain there is still a need to protest. But his kindness and determination to help others in difficulties have shone a light in the darkness of our times. On Christmas Day 2017, he was given a Points of Light Award for the Christmas dinners by the then Prime Minister, Theresa May. At this university in 2018, he delivered a memorable creative writing annual lecture. For over a decade, he has been a patron of the Letterbox Club, founded in 2003 by this university's School of Education in partnership with Book Trust, which gives books and stationery to children in care and, crucially, carries on giving when they move between institutions or addresses. Lem uses his public profile to campaign nationally for improvements to the care system. In 2015, he was elected as Chancellor of the University of Manchester. In that role, he launched law scholarships for diverse applicants. In 2019, he was awarded the Penn Pinter Prize by Penn, the International Writers' Association. This is given to an author who, quote, casts an unflinching, unswerving gaze upon the world and shows a fierce intellectual determination to define the real truth of our lives and our societies, unquote. In 2021, he was made an honorary fellow of Jesus College, Cambridge, and in a few days' time, he will be made a Freeman of the City of London at the Guildhall in the city. During the pandemic, the Duchess of Cambridge, now Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, chaired an editorial group which included Lem. They chose the winning selections for a volume of photographs entitled Hold Still, a Portrait of Our Nation, to raise money for the National Portrait Gallery and the mental health charity Mind. Lem's services to literature and to charity had already been recognised in 2010 with the national honour of an MBE. In 2021, this was raised to an OBE. These are just two in a long list of honours and awards. Today, we celebrate his, his towering achievements in poetry and the difference that his charity work and his words have made to children and therefore to us all. Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present Lem Sisse that you may confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. Thank you. It's, a, it's good to do a selfie, right? That's a good thing. <laughs> to get the selfie, to get the moment, to get it kind of, to get the moment, to get it captured, to get it held somewhere, somehow, for somebody. Somebody will look at that picture at some point and, and, uh, find some bridge to this moment, to them, whoever they are, and to me. Kind of triangle thing going on, kind of the moment, me, and whoever it is in the future that looks at that picture, and it means something to them. The selfie. I mean, the selfie's never really alone, is it? You know, it's for, uh, it's to connect. And, um, I, I don't, I don't, I, my mum's not here, she, I've only met her four times, never met my dad, met my brothers and sisters twice, three times in my entire life, they're not here to witness, and, um, and I'm okay with that, it's okay, life, life is what it is, but you are carrying your parents inside you and their parents 
and their parents' parents and all of the generations that have gone before you. You have put in so much work to get to this singular point. It is worth remembering and worth knowing that you carry all of them inside you, wherever they are in the world. If you're the first person in your family to get a degree, you're carrying them with you. If you're the next person in the family to be here uh, to, 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 to get your uh, degree or to graduate, then you're carrying the family story. We're all about stories. That's all we are. That's what a selfie is. That's what the recording of this is. That's what your mum and dad are saying. Or uh, 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 when, when, when they tell you about this moment. It's all about story and you're an incredible part of that. And this moment matters. The work you've put in matters to them. Maybe even more you know, to them just as much as it does to you, even if they're not here to be able to see it. You're creating memories. Uh, in my mind, for family, and that's also the family that aren't here, that can't be here to see you. You will have called home while you were... That was a fantastic yawn, by the way. Somebody was just looking at me. I swear she was watching. She went, oh, oh, oh. But you went out, you probably went out last night, didn't you? <laughs> to celebrate. <laughs> and it's a long deal, but it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. My ego can take it. <laughs> and it wasn't personal. It actually had nothing to do with me, did it? It's so easy to take offense, so easy to find a reason why you have been on the outside when in fact that had nothing, nothing, nothing to do with it, to do with me. Um, uh, I, I am, I am, I am, I'm really honored to be here. I'm here because of the Letterbox Club and Rose Griffith here and the, the University of Leicester who get books to children in care. Um, congratulations for all of the work that you've done. So, some of you will have called home and you'll have said you're all right when you weren't all right. You've studied through the pandemic, one of the hardest times in, in living history for the rest of your life, and you did it. How good are you? All I had to do was nothing. You're incredible. It's an honor to be here amongst you and with you. And thank you uh, to the university. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you, Lord Mayor, Vice-Chancellor. Uh, it's an honor to be part of Team Leicester. <laughs> <laughs>